All right, going live today. Topic for today's discussion will be showering with an ostomy. So we're just going to wait here a couple minutes. I like to start a couple minutes after the hour. Um, if you have any preliminary questions for me about showering with an ostomy, because that's our main topic today, or just generally about ostomies, go ahead and put them in the chat so I can make sure to get those answered. But we're going to just wait a couple minutes and get a couple people to show up and be able to take part in this discussion. So looking forward to talking about showering with an ostomy today. And I've got a couple of pre-prepared questions, like some some pretty common things that we hear and that I've heard from other people who have ostomies about, you know, how to shower with it, what are some do's and don'ts, different things to keep in mind. Um, and again, if you want to see some resources on this, we also have, I've put together a video specifically on this topic on Stealth Belt's website and on our YouTube channel, so you can check that out as well. But <clears throat> so seeing some chats already. Hey, Patrick, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Um, all right. <clears throat> so it looks like we've got a pretty solid amount of viewers already. Hello, everybody. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And again, for everyone who's just joined, feel free to drop questions in the chat. I'll be, I should be able to see those and whether it's shower related or otherwise, I'll just kind of be going off the top for the next 20 or 30 minutes here and talking about showering with an ostomy. So with that, um, you know, the, the first question that I'll go ahead and answer is, um, you know, should I take my bag off when I go into the shower to, to shower off? And my answer to that is it kind of depends on where you are with your, uh, cycle of bag changes. So typically you're going to be, you should be getting about three to five days, uh, for each bag. And, you know, if you can time it to be able to, uh, to take the bag off while you're in, while you take the shower, I highly recommend that. I, I always try to time uh, my showers around my bag changes so that I can make sure to really thoroughly clean out the skin in the area just around the stoma. That's really important for maintaining good skin health. And it's just a chance to get all the old residue and the adhesive because, you know, the adhesive's sticky as, as it should be. Um, but when you take your appliance off, it some um, you might get germs or dirt or whatever stuck in that adhesive that's kind of buried in your pores. And so I think it's really helpful when you when you're able to switch the bag and co like take a shower while that happens, um, that you can really clean the the skin in a way that is you know otherwise you wouldn't be able to do. Um, and you know the the next question there, there's a there's a number of questions that usually come up after that. But um, the next question is, if I'm showering with no bag on, um, what do I do if output starts happening? Um, you know, and if that the, to that, I would, I would there's a couple things. One, I typically try to time my my meals to kind of understand when output happens afterwards. I know that in my situation, I've got an ileostomy that if I eat, I've got about a 30 to 45 minute window before I can expect output because once I start eating, it's going to kind of turn the digestive system on and the food that I've eaten in prior meals is already further along in the digestive tract. That's going to get pushed out. And so, you know, it, it has happened many times where I'm in the shower and I, I kind of get trapped in there because the output starts. But, um, you know, if, if what I would recommend is depending on the, the thickness of your output, you know, it can it should be able to go down the drain. No problem. If you have like kind of chunkier output or, if you know, uh, not chewing the food well enough or anything like that, I would recommend getting like a, a hair stopper, like a like a tub stopper. Uh, the same way you would for hair. And, you know, I, I mean, I know it sounds kind of gross to be in the shower with the um, with the stoma that's not covered up, but I, I do think that the um, the benefits of cleaning out the skin really thoroughly with hot water and a soap that is, you know, appropriate for that. I'll, I'll touch on that more in depth in a second here, but, um, but having a chance to really scrub the skin in the pores around the area of the stoma is, is well, well, well worth it. And at the end of the day, I mean, the the drainage for our showers and our toilets, it all goes to the same place when it leaves your house. So you shouldn't be too, uh, you shouldn't get too caught up in that. And, you know, it's, it's, you're in the shower and it's just you and you. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of that. Um, you know, on the topic of soap, um, the, the 
the recommendation that all the clinicians give about the types of soaps you should use is you want to get something that's going to not have any added scents or oil. So you want a really basic soap. The one that I most like to use is called Cetaphil, and I'll put a, the name of that in the chat. Um, it's uh, it's right there at the bottom, oh, right here, boop, Cetaphil. Um, and so they make a really great hypoallergenic soap that's really basic. There's no added scents, no oils. And I use that with like a washcloth to really kind of scrub the, the skin around the stoma. And that's important, you know, because you like sometimes the oils and the scents can be irritants to the skin. Like if your skin's already mildly irritated, those can make it worse. Um, or, you know, even if that's not a problem, if you're using something with oils, that may make the adhesive not work as well. And so if you're somebody who has been struggling to get that, get up to that three day length of bag wear time, um, but you also have been using a soap that has a lot of, like has, has added sensor oils, it could be some of that soap oil that is still kind of getting stuck in your skin and making it more difficult for the adhesive of your appliances to do its job. So I think that that's something uh, worth looking into. And, you know, somebody, uh, Speedy Demon says that uses Irish spring body soap. Um, you know, I, it depends because the I think Irish spring body soap does have added scents and oils. Um, I know that definitely the ones that come in the bottles are going to have that. I'm less sure about the bar of soap there. Um, but you know, if, if you can test different things out and what works for you, it might not be the same as everybody else, but just generally speaking, the more basic, the soap, uh, leaving out those things, the, the more I would recommend using that. Um, and, uh, so Sherry, you said that, oh, wow, I'm getting a bunch of different options. So ivory soap and Martin Ferrer. Um, I'm not as familiar with those soaps, but I, you know, again, the common thread is like, if you, if you use the word, uh, hypoallergenic, so H, uh, Y P O, uh, I can't, I'm not gonna spell it out loud. Hypoallergenic soaps. If I, I'm going to put this in the chat as well and put it again down right here. So if you type in hypoallergenic soaps, you're going to get a, a range of different options that will be. Uh, good, you know, because if you look at the the ingredients lists, you're you're looking for a minimal amount of things there, and particularly the unscented versions of those soaps are going to be the best. So, um, I'm a I'm a really big proponent of you know having those those uh, your bag changes come with showers. But naturally, most of us are going to be showering more often than we change our bags. And so the, another question that often comes up and particularly among new ostomates, but, you know, I think it's just generally something that people often wonder about is, do I have to keep my appliance dry? And the answer to that is no, you really shouldn't be worried about keeping the adhesive dry. The adhesives are made to get wet. That's totally okay. And again, you know, if you're using some kind of device or something to keep, to try and keep water from touching the adhesive entirely, uh, you might be doing yourself a disservice there because you are um, not able to wash the area immediately around that adhesive or, you know, and um, it also just kind of doing something that you don't really need to do because the adhesives should be able to get wet with no problem. Um, I will say that while you're, if you're wearing your bag in the shower, you probably don't want to soap directly over the adhesive itself because, you know, the soap could break down the adhesive properties. So avoid putting soap directly onto the adhesive while you're in the shower. Um, but there's no reason that you can't get the, the actual appliance itself wet. Um, that's, that's totally okay. Um, I, I'm a very active person. I work out once a day, at least sometimes more than once. And that means that I shower at least once a day, sometimes more than once. And, I'm again, I'm changing my bag every third to fifth day. And so I'm, I'm taking, I'm going in the water and taking showers very frequently and, you know, it gets wet each time and I don't have any issues at this point and I don't think you should either. So when, when you're getting out of the shower, you know, there's uh, a couple things. So one, if you're getting out of the shower and you've taken the bag off and it's during a bag change, I would recommend that you've already like prior to getting into the shower, you've already set up your appliance on your counter or, you know, on your sink. 
where you already have the appliance, the, the hole cut out to the size of your stoma, that if you use any addi additive products like a barrier ring or strips or anything like that, that it's all ready so that once you get out of the shower, you can pat that area dry with a towel um, and then quickly get that appliance on there, you know, to avoid any of that time where uh, the stoma itself might start having output and you're, you know, floating around outside of the shower. Um, that has certainly happened to me a number of times in the past. Um, you know, a good option if you want to actually take a longer period of time uh, to let the skin breathe and, you know, like actually have the stoma intentionally uncovered. You know, this works particularly well for people that have skin irritation and need that skin to heal. Um, you can look into a product called Stoma Genie. Um, and I'll, again, I'll put that in the chat here. Um, and Stoma Genie is a, is a really great product that it's very simple. Um, I actually have one sitting here on my desk. So it looks just like this. And these tubes come in all different sizes and can even be shaped differently given the, the shape of your appliance. Um, and, you know, this is a really good option if you've got skin issues and you're getting out of the shower and you need to just have something kind of uh, to allow you where you just hold it in place until everything's dried off and this will this is uh, made absorptive material on the inside there to absorb any output and to contain it while you don't like while you're waiting to put the bag on and you know a lot of times too because this is shaped it should be pretty close to the exact size of your stoma so this is about uh, the exact size of my stoma um, you can actually kind of just slide the um, the appliance like right around the outside of this and put it onto your skin so there's even less time where you've got the stoma kind of hanging out there uh, where it might have output and it'd get all over the place. But um, this is a this is a good product if you're somebody, you know, again, I think particularly if you've got skin health issues and you want and need to have more time where the skin is uncovered and the, the, the free air is going to allow that, that skin to heal a little bit um, more easily. So that's another good tip for that. Um, going back to the initial, um, start of this tangent that I just, I just went down was, you know, if you're getting out of the shower and you have your bag on, so you bet you wore your bag into the shower and now you're getting out and you've got a wet appliance. Um, you know, the first thing I would do after you dry off is to take a little bit of time to, uh, get a dry towel and pat down, uh, the, the adhesive. So, you know, cause the adhesive is going to absorb a little bit of water. And if you pat it down, you should be able to take some of that water out of the adhesive and help it dry faster because while the adhesives are made to get wet, while they're wet, it is a little bit more likely for them to shift or move around. And the best way to get that to go away is for your body warmth and, uh, to, to kind of re-adhere the adhesive and for you to kind of manually dry it. Um, on that point, Many people, uh, and including myself, have used blow dryers or hair dryers to help the drying process. Um, but one word of caution for anybody who might be using a blow dryer to help dry off uh, the, the adhesive is that if you use a high heat setting, it can actually melt the adhesive and make it less effective. And so you want to use a low heat setting and you really just get the, the, the air more so than the heat from the, the blow dryer, you want to rely more on your body heat to, to do that and maybe use like towels or paper towels to, to dry that adhesive um, from the, the appliance once it's wet and you get out of the, the shower. Um, so that's, that's kind of the, the showering process. Um, and then let's see, so we've got a couple questions here. I'll pop them in the chat. Um, what can I do to keep the area dry so the flange doesn't come off. So um, yeah, as I was mentioning, you you really don't need to keep the appliance dry. And the main thing is just when you once you get out of the shower and it is wet, you know, do those those few things that um, are going to help get the water out of that. So then once you kind of move on with your day and get changed, that um, the the appliance is dry. And you know, I actually I usually once I either if I'm showering and I'm changing my bag or just getting out of the shower and I have a, a, a wet appliance that I'm drying off, I also, I throw on a stealth belt that's, um, you know, dry. I mean, and normally I'm just wearing the belt pretty much all day anyway, but the nice thing about having something like the stealth belt in particular is the, the fabrics that we make these out of are going to be moisture wicking. So it's going to kind of attract that fabric uh, or the, the water from the, the fabric of the adhesive. It's going to kind of pull it out. 
Um, and once this material gets wet, it's going to dry a lot faster than a typical um, uh, a typical fabric would. So like if you had a wet piece of cotton, like the shirt versus a wet piece of the nylon Lycra blend that we use in our products, that's going, our product's going to dry much faster. And so I, I find that having the added support of the stealth belt to kind of hold the appliance in place while also the moisture wicking properties of the fabric um, can definitely increase the, the, the speed in which the appliance dries off and uh, help reduce the likelihood that that flange just might shift around at all. Because, you know, if it gets wet, it shouldn't like peel off your skin or fall off. Um, if that's happening, that's probably a totally separate problem. You know, if, if, if a little bit of water is the thing that's making your adhesive come off of your skin, then that's likely, uh, you know, a skin irritation issue. Maybe you've, you've used soaps or some kind of oil in that area that's not allowing the adhesive to bond, or maybe it's time to try a different, um, a different appliance because different adhesives from different manufacturers are going to agree with different people's skin. You know, like for me, Hollister is the, the product that works best with my skin. Um, but you know, I tested a bunch of different things out and, um, I, I always recommend that people do that. So if you're, if you're getting into the shower, um, with a relatively new ostomy that doesn't need to be changed and you're, you know, it's coming off immediately after the shower, um, then I think there's probably some more troubleshooting beyond just trying to, to prevent it from getting wet, if that makes sense. Um, let's see. So, all right. Um, trying to think are there any other questions um so oh speedy you said that you had some you have an ostomy belt but not the stealth belt well i mean obviously i i work with stealth belt and so i'm a big supporter of the the product it works great for me and i would recommend you try it but you know to each their own i think the idea is similar um you know it's the idea of getting that uh, that added support and the moisture wicking from uh, from the fabrics. Um, so, you know, when you, once you're getting out of the water, that can be, that can be really helpful to have a dry, a dry garment of some kind that's going to help apply a little pressure specifically to the area around the, the, the stoma, because I'll just kind of demonstrate here on the inside of, of this stealth belt. Um, I, I obviously don't have the bag in there, but the appliance is, uh, the, the flange is in there as it would be. And you can see once I open up the zippered pouch compartment, um, this flange is matched or the, the belt is matched the size of the flange. And so when you tighten it down, it's going to apply pressure to that adhesive um, as close as possible. And then, you know, obviously this is the adhesive portion that gets wet. You want that um, to be covered. So it kind of pulls the, the moisture out from it. So um, yeah, I mean, if you, uh, it, I think it's, it's well worth trying. Um, I've, I've been in stealth belts for, um, nine of the almost 10 years that I've had an ostomy and, you know, I, I make it a point to try everything that's out there, but you know, this is still the product that works best for me. And, you know, we're, we're constantly trying to make it as good as possible. So, um, that's definitely something, something worth checking out, but all right. So with that, um, I'm trying to think if there's any other like really, um, hot topic questions that come along with showering with an ostomy, you know, the main things that I've discussed were, the types of soap, making sure that there's no added oils or scents, um, that you can shower either with your bag or without your bag, planning it around bag changes. The timing of your meals is really important um, for, you know, the output and, you know, making, keeping kind of mental note or, you know, even if you're crazy like me, you can have a spreadsheet of, you know, on October 12th, 2023, I ate this food at this time and then output came at this much time later. And, you know, I did that for, for months when I first had my ostomy and it gave me probably, I, I probably went a little overboard on it, but I really don't regret it because it, it gave me a lot of insight into, you know, kind of what I can, um, what I can expect with the different foods that I eat and the, the timing of all of that. But all right. So we've got another question here from Colleen. Can I please explain the comfort level and tightness difference between the stronger swimming stealth belt and the regular slash medium one? Yes. Great question. So, the, the two products that you're referencing are the Stealth Belt Pro, which is our main flagship product. It's the one that's on the mannequin here behind me, um, nine times out of 10. If you're new to a Stealth Belt, the Stealth Belt Pro is going to be the best option for you. The water-specific belt that you're talking about is the neoprene belt. 
And as the name suggests, it's a belt that's made out of neoprene, which is the kind of material that you would find in like a diving wetsuit, for instance, right? Um, and that's a lot thicker. So you're, it's actually like a like three millimeter thick neoprene. And so one of the, the big drawbacks of the all neoprene belt is that because it's a thicker fabric, it's not, and it's neoprene is meant to be an insulating fabric, right? Like a wetsuit for diving is meant to keep your body warm when you're in really cold water temperatures. It's not the most comfortable belt to wear as like a 24 seven option. You know, it's, I wouldn't go exercise, like go on a run or a bike ride with a neoprene belt necessarily, because it's going to be hotter than the other options. And um, again, there's, there's just a lot less stretch in the fabric of neoprene. So you're going to get some, some stretchiness for the neoprene, but nothing quite like you would get this in this belt. Um, and so the reason that we have that differentiation though, is because, you know, the, the pro style, this, the thinner, more breathable and lighter weight one is good for the water. You can certainly take it in the water. It's going to dry really quickly and it's going to allow to like give some support. But what we found, you know, through years of testing this and feedback of other people was if you're somebody who's like doing lap swimming where you're moving through the water quickly, maybe you're like diving into a, a swimming pool or a lake, or you live next to an ocean and the water's more turbulent, or you're doing something like surfing or wakeboarding, those like higher intensity water activities, what happens when the fabric is so thin uh, is if you move too quickly through the water, then it can actually cause some drag. Like this will kind of catch in the water because again, it's, it's meant to be a thin, lighter weight fabric, but in the water, the situation's different. Um, whereas the neoprene is exactly the opposite. It's made to really do a better job of holding its form. And that way, when you tighten it down, like when I wear a neoprene belt to go do lap swimming, I wear it super tight. Like it's, it's really, really tight. And so, yes. Um, so if you're like, you see, like you mentioned, so should the neoprene be the one that you use for like extreme sports and swimming, like water skiing. Yes. If you're, if you're water skiing and you're like, you've got a choice, if you're just wearing the belt, the neoprene is absolutely the best option. That's actually why it was invented. Um, Richard O'Hamill, who was the original inventor of stealth belt, um, he used to wakeboard and he wanted to get back to that after having an ostomy and um, the, the neoprene belt, the, the neoprene as a fabric in the stealth belt became that solution. And so, you know, I wouldn't recommend it as the first belt option because it's, you know, it's, it's specific in its, its use in the same way that like a bathing suit is specific in its use. Um, but it's, it's great for those who need it. But I'd say most people though, the, the regular stealth belt pro, like you see here, if you're just like kind of casually getting in the water or, you know, going in the, the bathtub or a hot tub. Um, the Stealth Belt Pro is still probably the better option. Um, so we got a question here. So I wear my bag pointing down, but I heard I can wear it sideways, which is better. Um, that's a good question. You know, it's, it, I think it does, there's a, there's a subjective element to this question, meaning that I don't think that there's a correct answer. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. It just depends on like what your situation is. I am somebody who likes to wear the bag horizontally and this belt that I've got on my mannequin is designed in that way. So you're, you're, it's made to be able to hold the bag towards the side. And in fact, when, when I put my, my appliance on, I'll just give you a quick demonstration, is I've got my, my bag on here. I'll do the, a quick unzip. And you'll see that my appliance is actually worn at about a 45 degree angle. And that way, you know, I can move it up into the belt and have it zipped up and have it off towards the side. But the benefit of having it towards the side like this is that I'm not having to tuck it into my waistband. Like I, I happen to be wearing a pair of comfortable pants right now that are stretchy, but you know, in those cases where you're wearing like a belt or, you know, a seat belt, other things that go across your waist where you might not want to have the bag straight down kind of hanging in your thigh and groin area. I think that the horizontal option is really great. Um, so I, I, you know, particularly if you're somebody who's really active, like I found that when I was running and I had my bag straight down, it was like hanging in that, in my groin and around my thigh. And it was really noticeable and irritating. So I didn't like that, which is why I'm, I'm, I'm on team horizontal, but you know, there are different people who have different situations. Like I, um, not, not everybody has the same kind of output, right? So like if you have a urostomy, for instance, um, which is that it's going to be urine output rather than uh, fecal matter that urine is going to be constant. It's like a slow drip 24 seven. And you know, the, it's going to, 
going to fill up the bags more frequently. And as a result, a lot of times the vertical orientation stealth belt, I don't have one sitting in front of me right here, but it looks just like this belt, except for the pouch is just extended downward so that the bag can be worn straight up and down. Um, those belts are uh, are often better options for people like, like your ostomy patients who have more frequent output. It's more liquidy, so they, you know, they have less of an opportunity to kind of move the output away from the stoma um, and where the opening of the appliance is. So, you know, I think it kind of depends. Some people um, actually use both styles. So they use it like two piece appliances, similar to like what's inside of here. So you'd have the, the flange in the actual bag that attaches it separately. And by using a two piece appliance, you can actually just change it at any given time. And so some people will get both a vertical and a horizontal stealth belt, and they've got their they're horizontal for being active. You know, they move their bag up to the side and it's like, that's active mode. <laughs> and then, um, you know, when they're being a little bit more casual or it's time to empty it, they move it down and, you know, put their uh, their vertical stealth belt on. So, you know, I think it really comes, it matter, it's a, a matter of personal preference ultimately. Um, and then, uh, so here's a question. Does the belt tend to pancake the output? So, you know, that's a good question. Um, something like the neoprene belt that I was talking about before, that fabric, because it's so like so much more robust, it is going to apply more pressure. But this fabric, the ones that are on our Stealth Belt Pro, should not be applying so much pressure directly over top of the stoma that pancaking is, is more of an issue than it would have been otherwise. You know, because pancaking, those who get it, and that's this is typically a problem that people with colostomies face, um, that, that usually is going to happen regardless. And what the best solution is to kind of manually move your hand, like to kind of move the output over top of the bag, you know? So if it's pancaking around where the stoma is and it's stuck, you would just kind of move it the rest of the way into, into the bottom portion of the bag. And with a Stealth Belt Pro, like the one I've got here, you can have this bag, like a bag on the inside of this totally uh, fill this up. So you can have an entirely full ostomy inside of a stealth belt. And so in that way, it shouldn't make the pancaking uh, problems worse um, for, for this product. You know, with the with the neoprene one though, however, where that the top layer is, is that thicker material, that's going to apply a lot more pressure and it's going to be a little bit harder for it to expand on the inside there, which again is another reason why I say that belt is a secondary option that's kind of uh, specific to the type of use that, that you're using it for. Um, so Colleen, do I know which one people purchase for horseback riding? Um, I don't know about specifically horseback riding, but just knowing the little that I know about that activity, I would say the Stealth Belt Pro is probably your best option. So you, you I imagine it's a pretty intense activity and in that you're sweating a lot, it's gonna be hot and you need to be functional and able to move around with some support. It sounds very similar to an activity like running or bike riding, something like that. Um, and for both of those activities, the Stealth Belt Pro is what I use. And so I think if somebody were asking me, which one should I get? Stealth Belt Pro. And, you know, either the vertical or horizontal, I'd probably say the horizontal um, for horseback riding. Because I imagine like when you're in the in the position that uh, like riding a horse, that there's a lot of kind of up and down motion with your legs towards your abdomen. Um, and having the bag towards the side would do better to keep it out of the way and make that a little bit more comfortable. Um, so next, we've got a question about the, the mufflers. So this is specific to a product that we have on Stealth Belt. And really all the mufflers are, are an insert that would go inside of the Stealth Belt directly over top of this area that are made to muffle noise. Um, they work okay. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's a perfect solution. Um, if the bag is, is fully empty and you use a muffler, it's going to work better. But the more that bag fills up, you know, it's going to push the muffler further away from the stoma. And so it won't work quite as well. Um, you know, I think that the, the mufflers do serve a purpose, um, but you know, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely an add-on product. You can choose to use it or not. Um, and, you know, I, I think that, you know, the, in the situations where I use the muffler, it's, if I'm in like a, a quiet room for a long period of time and I, I might have like some stoma noise. It's nice to have that in there to, to make it a little bit more quiet, but you know, it's, it does require like the more, 
the more empty your bag is, the better that those mufflers are going to work. So you yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, and so Speedy Demon, thanks for all the questions, by the way, guys. That's uh, it's awesome. It's so much better to to have real questions to answer than just riffing off the top. But um, Speedy, you were saying that you've got your mobility impaired, and because of the ostomy, you stopped wearing jeans. Um, you know, I, I don't know how how long postoperatively you are. Um, the uh, you should be able to wear jeans again, though. Like, I guess the one th the question I would ask is like, has your swelling gone down from having your surgery? Like, are you is is the swelling from the surgery gone? Because the jeans, since there's no stretch, might be uncomfortable to wear while your body's still adjusting to this big thing that happened to it. Um, but you know, I I wear jeans on a very regular basis and. Um, that should absolutely be something that you're able to do again. Uh, one, one thing that I would mention is like, you know, I, I think probably more, more for men, but again, with women, it, it kind of depends because women have high waisted jeans, low waisted jeans. There's a lot more options that I am not qualified <laughs> to talk about because I, I don't wear women's jeans, but for men's jeans, it's pretty standard. And a lot of times we're wearing a belt. And so in that way, what I would ask is, you know, is your, is your stoma in line with where the, the top of the pant line is? And that can be, that can be an influencing factor. And you can use something like a stoma guard, which or a stoma dome, which we also have on our website as well, um, that provides a buffer. Like you would put it on the inside. I've got kind of a, a let me see if I've got an example of that one second. Of course. Well, I didn't know. I wasn't expecting to answer questions about that particular product, but it's called the Stoma Dome. And it's a it's something that's got a it's like a dome shaped guard that you can use. Uh, it attaches to the actual appliance and you can use it on the inside of a stealth belt. And so if you're somebody whose pants fall right in line with where your stoma is, that can give you some buffer so that you're able to continue wearing that type of clothing. If you're like me and your pant line is below where the stoma is, I really like the horizontal wear for that reason because you're not having to tuck that bag into the pant line, which can cut off the flow of output and just be generally more uncomfortable. Um, but whatever the case is, you shouldn't give up on your jeans. I, I definitely do some testing and figure it out because I'm, I'm confident you can. Okay, so your stoma is above your belt line. Yeah, so hey, maybe, maybe the horizontal option for you, Speedy, is the... The way to to way to go but um the um oh so somebody actually said there's some feedback somebody else who uses the muffler and though it's not perfect it does make a difference thank you that's a, exactly how i would say it it's not a, you know i don't think there's a perfect solution to that problem but this is it's better than nothing especially if you have a particularly noisy stoma um i also noticed just on that topic my stoma was way noisier the first six months that i had it Maybe I just notice it less now, but I don't, I don't think so. I think that when my body was adjusting, it was just doing different things. I was way gassier and it just made more noise and I was getting used to reintegrating foods again. Um, and so if you have a really noisy stoma, you know, adjusting to a regular diet, you know, like the more fiber you eat, the more gas you'll probably get. But if you're somebody who eats fiber regularly, eventually you should find an equilibrium to where you're not getting as much gas anymore. But it's, you know, if you're, you know, like me, where you had ulcerative colitis and you were on a low residue diet, avoiding high fiber foods for months on end, reintroducing those back into your diet can definitely make for a noisier stoma. So that's, that's something to, to keep in mind. But, um, yeah. So Colleen, you were saying that your, your stoma is like right in line with the belt, the, the belt area. I would definitely look at the, the stoma dome as one of the options. And, you know, I, I think in particular, they work uh, really well on the inside of the stealth belt. Cause what you'll notice with the, the stoma domes is they actually, they attach with a little Velcro strips to your, to each of your appliances. Um, and when it attaches over top, the bag can kind of move separately. Um, I don't, I, I, I won't do this justice, uh, describing it without, um, without having an example, but we do have on our website, let me see if I can 
quickly get this pulled up. So actually, I've got a YouTube video that I made that specifically talks about self belt stoma dome. So how the stealth, how I use the stoma dome. And here we go, dropping it in the chat right now. So if you want to see an example of what I meant, that is right there. Put it in the chat. And you can you can click that and, and see how that works. Um, but Patrick, you use bib, bib overalls and suspenders. That's another great option too. Suspenders, you know, it's a, it's an excellent look, timeless classic. All right. Well, um, let's see. So does anybody have any, uh, other questions about, uh, stealth belts, about ostomy life about today was specifically about talking about showering and getting the ostomy wet and some of our strategies there but I'm getting kind of close here to the end of my time for, for this week. Again, I'm, I make it a point to try to do this regularly every Thursday. Um, so 4 p.m. Pacific time every Thursday, uh, unless we otherwise let it, like post about it on our social media, um, we'll be here. So if questions come up, make sure to come back. Thank you all for tuning in today. And yeah, have a, have a great rest of your week and your weekend. Cheers, everybody.